is WPF still alive in 2025 or it's time to move on? So in this video, we are going to look at the current state of WPF, what updates it's received recently, what Microsoft has planned for it and whether it is a relevant skill for developers today or not. So if you are a desktop developer or someone who is just curious where WPF stands in 2025, then this video is for you. But before we start, a bit of history about WPF, uh, you know, to set the stage. So WPF or Windows Presentation Foundation made its debut in the year 2006 as a part of .NET 3.0. It introduced a new era of desktop app development, bringing in XAML-based UI design, powerful data binding, and the MEVM pattern, which would go on to shape enterprise application for years to come. In 2008, WPF got a solid upgrade. Performance improvements, new controls like Data Grid and the Visual State Manager. It even introduced support for multi-touch, which felt pretty futuristic back then. By 2012, Async Await became a first-class citizen in the .NET world, and WPF followed the suit with improved async support and important binding fixes. But then from 2015, the momentum slowed. There were performance enhancements, support for newer APIs, but no major UI controls came in. And for the very first time, it looked like Microsoft has shifted its focus to somewhere else and WPF was pushed aside. But then in 2018, Microsoft open sourced WPF. And for the very first time, WPF was out in the open. Then again from 2020 to 23, .NET WPF saw quite an evolution. Better rendering controls, better tooling, and support for newer or modern .NET features. But one thing never changed. It remained a Windows-only platform. Fast forward to 2024, WPF is still continued on .NET 8, but Microsoft eyes or its focus has shifted to something else, Windows Mavi, a new cross-platform desktop application framework, and WinUI for modern Windows application. In 2018, Microsoft open source WPF, signaling its intent to keep the framework alive. But in a world of cross-platform, where does it actually stand today? As of .NET 8, WPF is still very much alive. It received hardware acceleration over remote desktop, a new folder picker control, and various performance improvements. Nothing flashy, but still very functional. In fact, if you go to the GitHub repo of WPF and you go to the Insights tab, you will see that this repo is still very active. A lot of people are still using it. And with .NET 8, being a long-term support to release, you can rely on WPF, getting security and quality updates until late 2016. So where does WPF fit in Microsoft's overall desktop strategy? WPF is now the go-to for enterprise application with a strong Windows dependency. WinFOPS? Still supported, but mostly legacy. WinUI 3? That's the future for modern Windows UX. And MOI? It's all about cross-platform development. So should you be using WPF in 2025? If you are building a rich interactive enterprise application or maintaining an existing WPF codebase, it is still a great option. But if you're starting a fresh project and need a modern UX or mobile support, look to the MOI or WinUI instead. The dev community is split. Some are sticking with WPF because it just works. Others are exploring newer tech, but not with growing pains. WPF isn't dead. It's just grown up. It's not a new kid on the block, but very silently it is doing its job. If it fits your use case, don't hesitate to use it. But if you're building for tomorrow, better try to explore what's out there too. So are you still working with WPF or planning to move to MOI or Windows UI? I would love to hear your thoughts. Mention them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos 
about software engineering. Thank you.